Hello, everybody on the internet. I'm still Ben Gilbert. I'm still with Business Insider, and I'm here with Kevin Webb, a Hello. brand new Business Insider employee, and he'll be here playing... What are you playing today, Kevin? I'm playing Shadow of the Tomb Raider. He's playing Shadow of the Tomb Raider. It's the third new Tomb Raider game, the new trilogy of Tomb Raider <laughs> games. Yeah. Uh, and you've been playing it a bunch for us for coverage, and uh, you've got a lot of stuff to show off, so let's jump in. Awesome, let's um, do it. We are playing it on Xbox One, in case you couldn't tell already, because uh, that's where they sent us the code on. Uh, we're playing it on Xbox One X, in case anybody's wondering at home. Uh, we are not able to stream it in 4K because of technical reasons. It's hard to stream in 4K in so many words. But uh, you've been playing it in 4K, maybe? Uh, not in 4K. I've been using the 1080p 60fps mode. Right, you know? okay. I, I need that animation there. Uh, and it's been great. Been great so far. Lovely to look at. It's my first time messing around with the Xbox One as well, or Xbox One X as well. So yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely a good uh, tech demo for that reason. It's like a black hole of a box. It's like a very <laughs> tight, very heavy little box. Uh, but regardless of the Xbox One X, uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider is brand new. It came out on Tuesday. Yeah. It's out on Xbox One, PlayStation 4. I think it's also on PC. Should be. I think, right? I believe yeah. so. Yeah. It probably looks <laughs> best there. Uh, so maybe if you have a powerful PC, that's the way to go. But it probably looks pretty good on Xbox One X as well, I imagine. Definitely. And if you have a PlayStation 4 Pro, it's probably optimized for that as well. I can't vouch for that. I'm going to say probably. Uh, so anyway, this game, it's published by Square Enix. It's made by Crystal Dynamics. Uh, they actually passed over the reins for this game to oh. uh, Eidos Montreal. Oh, all right. Yeah, so okay. this is their first time, but definitely still very familiar. Okay, all right. Uh, and also, I should say, before we get, we get too far in, please, if you have any questions for Kevin, for me, for anybody, just questions about whatever. Uh, comments, you want to tell us we look really handsome today, all that would be great. Uh, it's on our YouTube channel, on the comment section. You can do that. It's live right now. We're streaming on the internet. I don't yeah. know if you knew that. We're streaming live <laughs> on the internet right now. Uh, so you can comment in there. I will be reading it because Kevin's playing the game. Um, so yeah, that's it. Get at us. And so please, please take, uh, please take us in. All right. So I've got a couple saves I'm going to work through just so we can, you know, skip around the game. And while Laura is the Tomb Raider, there is some combat to be had, usually within the story events and things. So I'm taking us back to the start. And uh, I think we're going to encounter a boss pretty early on. So, so what kind of, I, I'd love to know about like, I don't know, how like open world of a game is this, right? Is it like the, the last game, the past couple of games had like hubs kind of, right? Yeah. And so this kind of operates the same way? Um, I would say the same. There are a couple central map zones, but it is mo mostly all large in one piece. Sure. So you can go around exploring. We can take a look at the map here. This is just the first zone. And eventually all of this will fill up with, you know, hidden crypts, a couple cities. Sure. And you can visit and stop by those. And within each, you'll see that they are, yeah, very full. Different tombs, different, you know, uh, animals, hideaways, all that kind of stuff. I didn't realize it was set in Peru. Yes. Yeah, so it starts in Mexico, and then the majority of the game then moves to Peru. Okay. All right. So that's where we pick up here with my buddy Jonah. So then it's focused around... Ride or die. Uh, Incans, I guess that would be? Mayans? Uh, I'm... I'm all, I was, all, all three Incans, Mayas, Aztecs, Mayans, Aztecs okay. all that action. You get like a kind of mix, a melange of yeah. South American uh, native groups and cultures. Uh, I don't know how much it goes into that. I'm, I'm fascinated <laughs> to know. Well, Laura knows everything right. is what we yes. learned. Yes. Uh, there are plenty of artifacts and things that we can check out, and she'll read them all to you if you do want a brief history. But for the most part, we're uh, you know just exploring where we land. <laughs> sure, yes, totally. All right. I'm fascinated to see what a boss fight looks like in this game because I don't know what the, th you know, like it's a game about like kind of sneaking around and exploring and whatever. Yeah. So a boss fight, I don't know. I feel like a lot of times games like this do boss fights in these like, I don't know, kind of bad ways, right? They're like kind of puzzle solvy affairs, yeah. right? I mean, these. <laughs> oh damn. <laughs> Yeah. Instead, she's so, getting mold by it. <laughs> this is not one of these. Uh, I'll have you know this is a different kind of big head. It's a jaguar. Oh, excuse me. Excuse yeah. me. She'll pronounce it correctly for us. A jaguar. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so this is not a puzzle solving boss fight. This is a boss fight boss fight. She just elbowed that dude in the face. 
Bomb. Oh! And so, you know, that's not a quick, quick time event. You actually have to point and pull the trigger. Okay. And then chase your man down. So we're at it. And so I'm going to activate survival instincts. Comes back so I can try and find this thing before it, you know, takes me out. Yes. Yes. Survival oh. instincts. So that's like a, it's like your detective mode. Ah. <laughs> Yes, exactly like that, except I can't use it while I'm moving. <laughs> as, as you can tell. Yeah. Oh, man. So, so there's no, no gun? Burst. There's no, like, like, bullet mode or bullet time? I don't think I have them in this uh, particular portion of the game because it's uh, so early on. Got it. Okay. And Jonah, of course, is no help. Oh. All right. Let's, let's get to it. Oh, I'm a fraud. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Yeah. We're getting chomped up. You can see I'm too used to my, you know, end game tech. Yes, of can course. Heal on the fly. Let's see. Yeah, I can climb this tree. Can you? Get oh, a vantage yeah, that point. Oh. oh, that doesn't help. <laughs> All right, let me stop messing around because that is unnecessary. I can't just fight him. There we go. Blah. Jeez. Off he goes. Yeah. And so in this game, you can also craft on the run. Clean things up a bit. So as long as you've got the bow equipped, you can just do it on the fly. And that goes for other types of arrows too. You can get flame arrows and poison arrows later on. Okay. He's still around, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is messed up. There oh! And he's down. He looks not that down. <laughs> okay, there he goes. That was a very polite death scene. He like went to sleep. That was nice. It was very nice. All right, so lovely teleported back over here to where John is. <laughs> He's been doing nothing to help. Yeah. While you've been fighting an animal to to the death. It's moral support. So who's support. Jonah? What's the deal with Jonah? <laughs> so Jonah is a recurring character in the Tomb Raider reboot. He was with Laura and Yamatai in Tomb Raider 2013, mm -hmm. and then was the only one of her friends who was crazy enough to follow her to Siberia in Rise of the Tomb Raider. <laughs> And yeah, he's so he's just continuing it. down the path of mistakes, yeah. hanging out with somebody who's constantly being violently attacked and or violently attacking people. Great. Pretty All much. Right. I, I think he's also technically employed. So. Sure. Right. So he's getting paid for it, yeah. at least. Okay. And so we can see how much of a savage lore is because as soon as this jaguar is done, we're here making a cape out of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a cape? Yeah. So part of the game is also you get different outfits, and some of those outfits are literally crafted with animal parts. Right. So there's no sort of that. <laughs> All right. That's very impressive. So here, it, yeah, Jonah is kind of the heart of the game, I would say. Um, when Laura is in trouble or, let's say, like, compromise morally and stuff. Right, right. Jonah is there to give that light advice, you know, lend a hand. And so a lot of this game I remember being, like, when I was like at E3 or at various events where they talked about it ahead of release recently. They talked about it being kind of this like, I don't even know how to describe it, like this kind of uh, like Apocalypse Now vibe, right? Like mm -hmm. real dark. Is it real dark? Because it doesn't seem that, I mean, maybe this is just character building stuff. In some moments it gets pretty dark, but I think for the most part it's still pretty run of the mill Tomb Raider. It's a Tomb Raider game, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There are deaths, there is, you know, violence, there's gore and stuff. Sure, but sure, sure. For the most part, it's kind of B action movie. I don't think it's anything that you're going to have, you know, nightmares about. Right, right, right. And Laura herself, I think, is Thank you. very plain. You know, I think they sure. are teased a bit at her, at her having a darker side. Right. Her having to make all these, you know, compromises with killing and all that stuff. But I know. not really. Not right. really. After the start, let's okay. say. All right. All I right. don't want to spoil yeah, too much. We can't spoil too much. There. We don't want to talk too much. <laughs> Along those lines, we should probably cut past these yeah. the cutscenes and stuff because I don't want to. We don't want to show too much. But what? What? Oh, it's a it's a throwback. It's a little okay. All right. Here we yes, go. Yes, sir. All right. <laughs> so this was maybe one of my favorite parts of the game. It's a flashback where we learn how Laura Croft became Laura Croft here at the Croft Estate. Of course. And so, for those of you who have maybe followed Tomb Raider for a long time, you know that the original games always used the Croft Mansion as a training ground. Wow. 
Tool. Or not all of them, but a lot of them would use Laura's Mansion as a place for her to go around and hop and practice and do different things. Sure, sure. So, during this portion, she is searching for the Strange White Queen. Cross our hero's path. Which is Constant here in the house. This is an attractive place, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. And it looks real different. Like, this is a nice little tonal escape from very the... Very bright. Yeah. Yeah. Very bright and colorful and pastoral. <laughs> it's a nice sun. Nice uh, sunset in the background. Yep. Honestly, if I lived here, I would not go to a tomb. <laughs> Ever. No. No, you'd think that her comfortable life would have kept her from doing stuff like that. So that is Richard Croft, himself a Tomb Raider. Right. Inspired. We've ever had... You never play as him, right? No. No, right? No. He's so always he, like the inspiration for her and backstory stuff, right? But I've, I don't think I've ever... I don't know that maybe maybe at one point they let you... I don't think so, though. I don't think. Uh, they never really show him in flashbacks in that way. To be right. honest, he doesn't look so athletic. I don't think he. this was his style. That's <laughs> fair. <laughs> but uh, you do see him more of him in this game than the other ones. And his death plays a role in the story. Okay. I feel like, we were talking about this a little bit earlier today, but I feel like a lot of these last couple of Tomb Raider games have done a lot of trying to explain the origin story of Lara Croft yeah. over and over and over, which it almost feels like Batman-y at this point, right? Where you're like, <laughs> every one of these is like, you gotta start with like, all right, it's your father, and it's like that happens to you, and you're forced to discover something that he was working on, and... Exactly. Yeah, I don't know. I just feel like that's a recurring thing where I'm like, all right, it's her father. I get it. There was a she's got to follow in his footsteps. And anyway, this seems pretty cool though that you're able. <laughs> yeah. I don't mean to. Just, I'm not trying to be dismissive of Tomb Raider. <laughs> I get that there needs to be a premise. It's just like you know, feels like we're repeat, repeating premises a little bit at this point. But I knows? mean, anyone who has seen Batman Begins probably remembers the you know him falling in the well. Looks not much different from this scene. Here, right. You know. Right. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> when you really think about it. But it is a fun way to, you know, turn the gameplay on its head a bit because you're still using the same, you know, platforming mechanics and things just sure. to navigate the house. Right. There's some similar stuff in Spider-Man, actually, that's really uh, interesting where you're playing as different characters and it's kind of tonally different. Gotcha. Uh, which I think is, maybe it's just because Spider-Man is front of mind with Spider-Man <laughs> having come out recently. It's a shame. Uh, I've been playing so much of this, I have not had a chance to play Spider-Man. This is the rub, Kevin. Yeah. This is the situation we live in. <laughs> this is the amazing situation where you're like, oh man, there's too many games. Uh, That's yeah. the season, yeah. If you had just started a week earlier. <laughs> if you had only started a week earlier. I'm not mad, though. I've thoroughly enjoyed my time. <laughs> That's good. That's good to hear. That this, so, I mean, you know, repetition, whatever aside, it seems like this game is probably, you know, pretty, pretty decent to play. Yeah. Like, the actual game of it seems competent. Very competent. Very well put together. It feels, yeah, like a natural evolution, even though uh, this one was made by a different company than the last two. Right, right. Are they the... Let me see. Uh, Idos Montreal. I'm pretty sure they're the Deus Ex folks. Ooh, I didn't even think about that. Uh, which, yeah, they're the, the last game they made before this. Also, they're the team working on the unannounced or untitled Avengers game. Uh, the yes. Square Enix Avengers game. I'm so ready for that. I'm expecting it to be a third-person action game, given the entire history of their, I don't know, the last ten, I don't know, maybe ten years of their games that they've made at Idos Montreal. Maybe not ten. They were like <laughs> seven. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so they worked on, apparently they also did some work on the 2013 Tomb Raider. And Rise of the Tomb Raider? Are they, have they been working on all these? Anyway. It looks like Crystal D and Idos Montreal <laughs> okay. did some previous work together on these. Regardless, anyway, uh, if you're familiar with the Deus Ex franchises at all, uh, it's a, I don't, I don't even oh, know how to it's a cyberpunk kind of franchise. <laughs> they, they made uh, that before this. She's having a rough day. Yeah, we're not a pro yet. I mean, she's doing pretty good for somebody who just fell off a building. <laughs> Chuckles, <her> whole <laughs> Woo. She's close now. She didn't even get that messy. It's like, I'm yeah. very impressed. <laughs> we are need, where we need to be, no bumps or scrapes, it seems. Yeah, yeah. Um, by the way, just as a reminder to anybody at home, if you have any questions uh, or comments or whatever else, please feel free to let us know. Uh, and if you're watching this at home uh, later, after we've streamed it, please feel free to drop any comments below to let us know stuff you'd like to see in future future streams, uh, future uh, Let's Plays, because we, you know, we record these and then we push them out afterwards. And uh, ideally, if you're not able to join us live, you can join us later on. 
Uh, so if you're doing that, thank you. And please subscribe. Bye. We would love it. That would be so nice. That would be so <laughs> Absolutely, good. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, but yeah, this is really cutesy. I, I like that they're doing this uh, This little uh, flashback scene. I'm surprised this isn't the tutorial, honestly. That seems like that would be a good idea. Uh, so where we're, where we're at here is actually a puzzle that's pretty early in the game. Mm -hmm. So she held up this sketch that gives you some clues as to what you need to do in the room. Got it. And I don't want to make it too easy for people who might want to play the game. Sure. So I'm not going to sure. spend the time. But it is a very cool puzzle in this room. Take some time to you know move the statues around, which is pretty this much is classic, classic Tomb Raider. Yeah. Yeah. This classic is very Tomb Raider extremely fair. Tomb Raider. <laughs> yes. Uh, we have a couple of questions. We're, we're going to jump into some questions. I'm going to rapid fire match you while okay. you're playing this. I think we're going to load up another save. So uh, now's do it up. Now's the perfect time. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, First question from Miriam Menash Shabirni. Shab Shabini? Excuse me. I'm certainly butchering a name here. Uh, what's the game? This is Shadow <laughs> of the Tomb Raider, as we can now see on the screen. Yes, indeed. <laughs> um, and we are playing this on Xbox One X, so there are no graphics cards right now. And this is yes. even the 720p high resolution mode. Right. So already looks great, and it just you know gets increasingly better. I would love to see. I'm sure it's out there now, the comparisons between the enhanced console versions and the you know, PC versions. Yeah, I bet actually like the folks over at like Digital Foundry or something like that, Eurogamer's Digital Foundry, yeah. they do that like very serious pixel breakdown. I'm sure they've gone through that. Uh, and we've got a couple of other questions here. Sure. Uh, I'm going to take you guys to PyTT, which is one of the hub cities, a hidden city in Peru, Okay. Uh, where there are a lot of indigenous people, a lot going on in PyTT. Right. Are we'll they speaking Quechua to each other? Uh, no, they the are indigenous speaking... indigenous language. Plain English. Plain English? What? <laughs> Unreal. Plain English, yes. Uh, okay, next question. Is there any online with this game? No, there's not online multiplayer. Actually. No online multiplayer. Is no. there any online functionality, though, otherwise, right? Like, there's, there's not, like, leaderboards not, or anything no, like that, right? No, not that I've seen. Um, okay. There is a season pass that has other, like, challenges and right. teams and whatnot, but right, I don't right. think there's any online portion. I've seen a lot of posts about just community stuff with the photography mode, just sharing what you're doing in the game, but nothing. So that's something. There's online. like, a, you can share your photos, I guess, online, yeah. it sounds like. Okay, all right. So here we are in PyTT. Whoa to your outfit. Yes. Whoa, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> she's looking very different than when we last saw Lara, so it looks like she's probably been through some, some mess. Yeah, so this is a Serpent Guards outfit, and these okay. are members of the cult who hang around here in PyTT, the cult of Kuku Khan. Okay. Uh, and they want to remake the world in the image of Kuku Khan and remove the filth, which, you know, is a thinly veiled reference to genocide. But, you know. No big deal. We're not going to let them do that. Right, no genocide. Lara Croft, yeah. anti-genocide. So, though everyone does speak in English, sometimes they don't want to talk to you if you don't have the right outfit on. Oh. So, oh. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You got to get the right threads. Okay. Which you, you, you think they wouldn't be so easily fooled because she's so, like... I mean, not she's from here. <laughs> right. Like she's very clearly not from there in every other way. Okay, but uh, no, we're doing it. So we've got a couple other questions. Mm -hmm. um, also, first and foremost, somebody sh dropping some love from India. Hey, hey. what's up, India? Uh, welcome, welcome. We're here in New York City. Please come visit. Uh, we've got a question from Xander the Lion, or Xander de Leon, depending mm -hmm. on how you want to pronounce that. What do you think of the game yet? Worth the hype? I don't know how much hype there's been. I feel like there's, there's been, been a medium lot of, hype. Yeah, I think there's, I think been, there's a been a lot of hype and a lot of right. marketing. Which yes, you can for sure. For sure, that. A uh, triple A yes. game. I would say it's, if you like the game, if you like action games like this, yes, it is worth the hype. Okay. I don't know if it's as revolutionary as some of the right. ads and things make it sound, you know? Sure, I sure. think that the way they're marketing it is, you know, this is going to be what bridges the gap between the new Tomb Raiders and the classic ones. I don't really feel like that's the case. Okay. Um, so in terms of story and everything, it's, it's a little bit more of the same. But that's not bad, because it's a fun game. It's a well-built game. And there's plenty to do. I finished the story mode in about 12 hours. Okay. A little bit less. Um, and even then, I had only completed 60% of what is there. It so. looked like, from what you were just looking around the map a little bit, it looked like there's like a lot, basically. Yeah, it looks yeah. Like there's so a I ton guess, of fast travel points, like a lot of like, and each, I presume, like each fast travel point has like a handful of objectives nearby that like maybe side missions or something like that. There, there are dozens. There are yeah. a lot of both travel points and um, side events to do. So I guess we'll take a 
another look at the map now that I have, you know, the expanded end game map. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, okay, we got, we've got, let's see if we've got some more questions. Um, hey, hey, Morocco too, let's go. Somebody's asking if we were using uh, the MacBook. The MacBook I'm using and oh. it's in front of you, we're just, we just have computers open <laughs> so that we can monitor questions and whatever else. Don't worry about those. Those are not for video games, not for, yeah. I mean, they are. You can play video games on MacBooks, but we are not. We are playing <laughs> this on an Xbox One X, as Kevin previously mentioned. Uh, yeah. So just taking a look at the map, this is you know more fill, filled in now. So each zone will give you a completion percentage and a checklist okay. of things to do in that specific area. How many zones are there? Like it looks like. So that was one. There's a middle zone here, I guess. But really, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And so some of these, you know, there'll be other cities similar to Pi TT. Um, some of these are just large tombs. You see this one is inside of a volcano here. Right, yeah, yeah. This is um, where the end of the game takes place. All right, we should, yeah, we should not go there. The path is blocked. Okay. So we'll be sticking around here. We're back in the starting area of the game, really. Okay. Um, and we're going to do a crypt and a challenge tomb in this area. Let's do it. Yeah, and we're going to put on the, some new clothes since we don't have to talk to anybody out here. I've definitely, I, I, we, were, we were also, we were talking about a little bit about this earlier. Like I was saying how much I liked the the uh, the side tombs like that was something that when I first played the 2013 Tomb Raider like the first reboot of the modern trilogy yeah uh, it was the most interesting uh, stuff to me so that's, I'm excited to see that stuff so these are just the different taking outfits out some outfits yeah um, the Six Floor one is similar to what she had in the first game I believe mm -hmm. and then we saw these which are both from Pi TT okay um, and she doesn't have the mask sadly when she's out in the wild she just has you know the suit. Got it. <laughs> um, oh, maybe this is the one from the first game, and this is just another suit. And so, thankfully, we did get the extra deluxe like DLC kit. So most of these outfits actually come with that version of the game, along okay. with some weapons and other things. Um, and we've got the throwback suits to Angel of Darkness on PS2. I, was, I felt like that had to be in here, right? <laughs> like, where's the original? Tomb Raider. Uh, so we don't have Tomb Raider 1, we have Tomb Raider 2, Laura. Okay. That's really messed up looking. Wow, that's weird looking. Yeah, so blocky. Wow. And then with the jacket, we have her as well. Is that what we're going with? I don't know. You let me know. <laughs> sure, yeah. Let's go with... No, no let's go with something more... Uh, less crazy looking. This All is right. like a novelty look. Well, since I took out the Jaguar earlier, I think I've earned a chance to wear the Jaguar suit. <laughs> that's fair. There you go. And right. uh, the different... Equips will give you different abilities depending on what you want. Okay. So this one gives you, like it says, quieter um, movement if you have the leg piece on, and then you're less visible to enemies if you have the chest piece on. Word. All right. So I can't believe she made a vest. All she made is a vest out of that whole animal. It was like a lot of animals. There's there. some booties there. Some, you know. Okay. That's fair. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. Shin guards. Some shin guards. Uh, we've got a couple other questions. I'm going to sure, get sure. at them because yeah. I'm so excited to have some questions. We are out here exploring. Uh, do, 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 uh, can you drive or any other form of transportation besides the fast travel feature? Uh, she doesn't have a little feet, jeep. Yeah. <laughs> or anything. That's I mean, it. Uncharted, there was a jeep. I don't know. There is no, no jeep. vehicle anything in this game. No vehicle uh, you are all by foot, sometimes by grappling hook, I guess. Okay. Right, yes, there's a grappling hook in this. I gotta, I gotta see that in action. Omega I wanna see some action here. in general. So, that one is a little bit tough. <laughs> it's not a lot of action. There's not a ton of action outside of the main story mode, and um, some crypts will have enemies. Okay. You know, wild animals and things that you have to overcome. I like how you called wild animals enemies. I mean, <laughs> not like they're trying to eat me, that's my enemy friend. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's fair. Okay, all right. So we are down here in a crypt. That, uh, that question is from Joe Nugent, by the way. Thank uh, you, Joe Nugent. I appreciate that. Want to make sure you get a shout out. Uh, you, you know, for anybody just joining, let's let's give a little refresher here. We're playing okay. Shadow of the Tomb Raider on the Xbox One X. Yes, sir. It is available now. It's uh, as of this past Tuesday on the Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC. So I'm using my survival instincts. You can scope out traps once you get a certain ability. So I'm just going to squeeze by these guys. When you say get a certain ability, is it like you're leveling up and you have a skill tree, or is it, yeah, right. Exactly that. So yeah. when you're searching around, when you find things, you'll get a little bit of bonus experience and stuff, and that will go towards um, the skill tree, and you can 
get points and spend them as you will. Pretty standard for action games nowadays. And luckily, Laura has most of the stuff that she started. At the start, she has most of the equipment that she had in previous games, so there's not that portion of you have to find all your things again. Right, right. So you're really just building from where she was in Rise in the original uh, 2013 Tomb Raider. What's she walking through there? Is that mud? Yeah, mud, quick sandy stuff. Got it. All right. So we're marching through. And the crypts, as opposed to the larger tombs, are more just about like exploring and avoiding traps and things than sure. um, puzzle solving. As you can see, there's some stuff. And again, survival instincts show me that if I step on that, nothing good will happen. <laughs> Immediately killed. But we're going to jump it. Oh, you can cut it. Oh. <laughs> you can never even You're just that. Get in wild. <laughs> so you see, I just picked up a journal, got some XP, new skill points. I think I've got six now. So that's sweet. We're pretty close to the end. Or I, I've. Haven't maxed everything out, but I have just about every skill that I would want right, here at right, the end right. of the game. And you didn't have to do a ton of side missions for that or anything? It was just kind of natural, I assume? Yeah, just from uh, progressing through the story. And here we have um, an artifact that will let me decipher different monoliths and understand the local languages better. So you get EXP just for finding them, and then okay. it helps you find other hidden artifacts and things right, right, and right. challenge tombs and the like. That's kind of like an ongoing thing of the new trilogy where you're like learning languages and it's helping you unlock new things and, and whatever else you do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm always in a protracted slide straight downhill and I do a leap into the air and then land on a slide again. No problem. <laughs> totally casual. So here we go with a sarcophagus. Let's pop that bad boy open because that's what we do. No problem. Yeah, just get right in there. Yeah. No respect for the dead. They're no. not here. <laughs> ah, and uh, see, we got some new boots. Some new boots. Yep, there were some new boots in there. So as it says, we're going to have to go back and craft these new boots. Right. Oh, you can get out of here quickly. That's good. Yeah, but I don't know. I kind of want to go back in and see if there's anything else to be found in the cribs. Extra boots. Yeah. Um, More kicks. Let's see. We have any other... Oh, there's some gold here we can mine out. And so there is also uh, like a merchant system in this game, so you can sell things that you find and, uh, you know, trade them for goodies. New guns and things. All right, so we are back out. It's really interesting. It's, I, I am shocked that there is such little combat, given that there, has been, there was a lot of combat in the previous games, I would say. I think that they wanted to balance it a bit better. Yes. That, that would be my assumption, is that they wanted a bit more of a balance, so... Less of an Uncharted experience, more of like a, I guess, Tomb Raider experience. Yeah, so yeah. when you're exploring, I feel like it is very much focused on the exploring portion, whereas the story mode missions will have you, yeah, fighting all the time, every turn, pretty much. All right, so we're going to go back across. E okay. Let's just run across. Let's see what happens. Oh, oh, yeah, no. <laughs> well, cool it, Lara. This is a family show. Right. So, down there, no good. <laughs> Once again, instant death. Yes. And this is definitely an important upgrade for Laura is to have yeah. the survival instinct show you where the traps are so you don't unwittingly, you know, destroy yourself. Yeah. I feel like that'd be real easy. <laughs> And yeah, are you depending. activating that, by the way, or is it just popping up? Like when you got to that part, is it just showing red glow? Oh, I'm, I'm activating it myself. You're activating uh, right. with the right stick when you press it in. Okay. Now, depending on your difficulty that you want to play on, mm -hmm. it might show you more or less, or you might have to upgrade things even for that to work. I see. Um, you play, but you're playing, playing on like normal. Yeah, uh, yeah just right. the standard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I definitely went and found that one first. Jeez, you're not playing it on hard. <laughs> Gosh. No, we're on the timeline. You, you got call deadlines yourself a around here. Professional video gamer. What is this? <laughs> All right, Nonsense. so we here's a crack in the wall. Lots of kind of stuffs in here. More gold. What is this? Ah, a map. So we found an archivist map that's going to show us more stuff in the area. So there's a relic there, you know. And I'm kind of upset that you can't mark everything on the map as like a waypoint. So it'll give you one blue waypoint, but you have to be in the zone already to mark it. Okay. And yeah, it's a little finicky. All right. But I mean, a lot of that stuff, those things are like collection things, right? Like treasure or whatever, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
And so there are all sorts of ways to find that stuff, either just by, well, all right, where's the opening? <laughs> either just by exploring on your own. You can talk to people in the villages, and they'll give you more information. Or um, as we saw, you can look at the monoliths and relics, and they will give you clues as to where to be, like this. This seems to describe a hidden chamber nearby. Why wow, is this super dark? Like, actual dark, not thematically dark. Yeah. So definitely one of the things this game does well is uh, HDR mode. The contrast between the light and dark portions of the game is very excellent. And we're not playing with HDR on because this uh, monitor that we have doesn't even support it. But no, you can right. see the stark contrast between, you know, when we're in a dark area versus somewhere that's very well lit. Just going to squeeze right past these bodies once more. No big Ooh. deal. And we're back out. I feel like there was another... No, nah, maybe not. Mm -hmm. it's I guess that you already passed the trip thing. Oh, the tripwire, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was just <laughs> I making it's sure you weren't the about person. to run and do another thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure everyone in the comments would, you know, once again, know that I'm a fraud. <laughs> <laughs> Stop playing it on hard! He's getting killed by stuff! <laughs> All right, so let's head over to this challenge stream that's nearby. And again, the game is just full of wildlife. You can go around and hunt if you're about it. It seems like a pretty typical Tomb Raider thing to do. Yeah. A lot of hunting and crafting. Especially when I need, you know, my new outfits and things. Very important. This is more like a shopping game, <laughs> is what you're saying. You know, I think that's going to be part of the fun. If somebody picks it up, once the story mode is done, you can just go around. Looking for stuff, getting you. Let's see what we can do with these new boots that I just got. I mean, are, would you describe them as made for walking? <laughs> <laughs> these evening star, nope. I don't even have the goods, so. Sorry. Unfortunately, I'll have to do. Again, I was so quick through the story mode, I missed these small power ups on the way. All right. Unbelievable. Yeah. I'm, uh, have you, so we've got another question. Mm -hmm. We've got a great question. Sure. An important question. Uh, I think it's especially pertinent given like all the AAA games that come out that have, you know, glitchy, weird problems. Mm -hmm. You know, the fallouts of the world or whatever. Fallouts, I guess, expected. You know, I shouldn't. Yeah, there's so much going on. <laughs> there's a lot going on there. I get it. Uh, but uh, we've got a question from... Uh, Adil Zahir Khan, who asked if the game is glitchy and if you've come across anything in particular like that. Um, actually, I would say no. A surprisingly few amount of glitches. Not like clipping through walls or... Definitely nothing like that. The crazy. only um, issue that I had maybe more than once, really, was when in cutscenes, if you pause during the cutscene and then unpaused, Sometimes the voices would be out of sync with oh. what, how they were talking. Weird. Okay. So it seemed more like an audio thing than anything else. Okay. And so we are in the first challenge tomb. And on normal difficulty, the game will actually give you these prompts to swing and do different um, climbing abilities all the time. So if you're ever kind of at a loss of what to do, they do want to help you out there. Oh. Down we go. Here underwater. And so Eidos added what they called action swimming to this game. Action swimming? Yes, because, you know, nobody likes the water levels. That's true. <laughs> Historically, in all games. Yes. The water levels are usually, you know, the most trying. So in this, they tried to make it a little bit more fast-paced so that when you were, found yourself underwater, that you're going to be moving quickly, that things are going to be happening. Did as they play to. this part of the? Did they this part specifically where you're very <laughs> slowly walking through the water? Uh, that's just me for dramatic effect. Oh, okay. Sorry, right. sorry. No, no. That's <laughs> fine. <laughs> so I can already see that. Yeah, this guy's in the way. My survival instincts. You know, oh, there's actually a relic in the corner. I would have missed. But yeah, mm. survival instincts will let you know what you can interact with in your environment and. Especially in challenge tombs, it's going to give you clues as to how you're going to solve the puzzles inside. I would have assumed you had to shoot the ropes, but apparently <laughs> you had to jump on it. All right. I don't even think my guns are that good. I like to imagine in these scenarios, the original, like, the people who built the puzzle going through it, just being like, I really wish I hadn't put this stupid puzzle here. Like, I just want to go get my lunch, and I have to <laughs> jump on this thing, so this thing lifts up, and then I have to reset it. Like, it just seems like such a hassle. 
Man. So there's a base camp in here so you can fast travel back to this nice. tomb. That is nice. I really like that they've adopted the Dark Souls, like you've got a campfire to save fast travel system. It's very strange. These games, to a, to a large extent, these new three one, the three newest ones feel very pastiche, like they're taking a lot of stuff from a lot of different games, you know? Like there's definitely like some Uncharted, definitely. some Assassin's Creed, some Splinter Cell even if you want to be like that, about like some of the sneaking and whatever. Uh, maybe not Splinter Cell, but like uh, <laughs> trying to think of Just the stealth games. elements, I know how you mean. The things that have sort of become standard, I think, for AAA games definitely yeah. all came together in the first, you know, 2013 Tomb Raider, the first Square Enix one. For sure, for sure. Ooh, where am I going from here? Let's see. What are we? What is this area that we're doing? Uh, this is the challenge tomb. This is the challenge tomb. Maybe right. the very first challenge tomb. Okay. I skipped it because I felt like I might have to come back for some reason. I don't know. But <laughs> you unfortunately cannot replay challenge tombs normally. Right. But right. as a part of the season pass, they say that you will be able to replay them with different modes. So that probably changes, you know, the difficulty or how puzzles and things are aligned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it'll become like a challenge mode or something, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Totally. So. That Makes content sense. is not out yet, but I'd be curious to see what they do because the challenge tombs, uh, like we were talking about, that's my favorite part of the yeah, game, I'd yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like a smart puzzle, basically, right? Like, it, I don't know, I always felt like it was uh, an interesting little, like, side uh, intellectual curiosity or something. I don't really know how to put that. Like, it's just like a nice little, like, thoughtful thing that you can do that has nothing to do with murder or <laughs> exploration or escaping something falling on you or whatever. It was always just like... You know, think for a second and look at this thing and try to figure it out, which yeah. I appreciate. Uh, we've been asked to bump up the brightness. I we we can try. Uh, I will send that message through the stream oh, no. to the folks in our control room. We've got but, the goods. Are we able to do that here? Yes. We can do it right here. Let's so bump it up you can a actually little change bit. between high resolution and high frame rate in this oh, menu. Right, right, right. We're gonna stick with resolution. You yes, know, for the folks totally. at home. And uh, yeah, we can turn up the brightness, brightness just a little a scotch. Bit. All right. And Gamma is already set. There we go. How about that? You ask, and you uh, you get it. Get yeah. that that bump, that bump up. I wouldn't have even thought to do that. Somebody uh, should have asked in that crypt, because I, <laughs> I could barely see that. <laughs> All right. So what are we doing here? We have these two hooks and these things to catch. There you go. So again, survival instincts will help you solve the puzzle and also give you clues from Laura herself. And she wouldn't have said that if you hadn't already gotten them and come, like, you, if you had done this in the beginning of the game, you wouldn't have had those survival instincts and you wouldn't have actually heard that, or? I would have had the regular survival instincts. Okay. We'll see if we can go through here. And but not the guy. upgraded one or, or whatever? Uh, you don't need the upgrade to, see, you only need the upgrade to see the traps. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> well, we needed to see at least one horrific death. So, yeah. That's, all yeah. right, there it is. That's it is, one for the road. That's it's gruesome, as always. So what happens when you don't think, because I cut the rope, yeah. but I should have cut it from the other side. <laughs> or at least just gotten out of the way. Yes. <laughs> that's right. Uh, I'm got, the best. Uh, we've got another question here from Imran Tahir, who asks, what console is this on? We've said it a few times, but we, uh, just in case you were wondering, we're playing this on an Xbox One X, uh, but it is also available on PlayStation 4 there we go. Uh, and PC. Uh, and we've got another question here afterwards. Yeah. from uh, Brian Alanis, who asks mm -hmm. if Lara has less cumbersome outfits you can put on her. Uh, and uh, I, we, we looked at this a little bit before, but there is a lot of outfits in this game. Like cumbersome that. is an interesting word. <laughs> I would say that <laughs> all of her outfits are built for the jungle. Okay. I'll put it that way. All right. They're not all capes and stuff like this, but uh, right. well, right. not all of them. There is just a regular dress, but sure. they all are... I guess regular outfits. Uh, all right, so we got to push the carts. But you have to raise the ladder first. Uh, I believe I'm going to have to push the carts to raise the ladder. Really? Oh, okay. Because the other, the weight on the other side. Well, all right, all right. Well, yeah. Demonstrate it. Yes. You don't have to. We're going to tie this bad boy to that. <laughs> that was a real yeah. action shot yeah. of Lara there. <laughs> Definitely one of my favorite parts of this game has been the photography mode. I put something up on the site actually about just how much fun I've been having just taking pictures because you have so much control over the camera Absolutely. and the depth of field in this game is just lovely. This is something that has been, I think maybe within the last five years has become really prevalent in a lot of games. Uh, and it's really great. It's something really smart that 
gives not only gives players a chance to like take sweet photos and share them or whatever, but gives the people who made the game a chance to show off their game a little more. Like you get to see a lot more of a game Definitely. and explore the visuals in an interesting way. And it gives you some incentive to you know not just run through it. Yeah, absolutely. It makes you stop and okay. like realize, wow, that looks really great. Let me take a photo of this or whatever. All right. Uh, so the rope snapped when I brought this guy down. Uh oh. Uh oh. Let's see. Duh. Uh oh. Do you just run out of batteries in your controller? Oh, I might have just run out of batteries in the controller. Let me see if I can get you some batteries. I'll be right back. Oh, the Xbox Life. Oh, OK. All right. Well, we... uh, this is tough. This is unfortunate. We'll, we'll have to have batteries for next time. Well, we might have to. Let's, let's maybe cut it there, because we've been oh. playing this for 40 minutes. We've shown a lot. <laughs> We don't want to show the whole tomb anyway. We don't want to show you the, the solutions for everything. OK. Uh, and we will be back next week, next Friday. You'll be alone. I will not I be will. here to be a Muppet and be very dumb next to you while you play a game. So everybody get ready uh, for what are you playing next week, FIFA? Uh, so right now it seems to be a toss up between NBA 2K19 or FIFA 19, okay. which comes out at the end of the month. So. If you have a preference between the two, definitely drop a comment. Let us know what you'd like to see. Please. Take that into consideration. Um, this is a shame, though. It is. It, it is. is. It happens. You know, what are you going to do? It was the game telling us it was time to go. So we're going to go. Uh, it has been a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us. And if you uh, joined us late and you want to see the full thing, it'll be up as an archive on YouTube, on, on Tech Insider's YouTube channel, just like everything else Tech Insider does there. Yep. Uh, and otherwise, you'll be back next week. We'll be back most Fridays, every Friday. I don't know. We're going to see how this goes. That's the thank plan. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Kevin, for joining me today. Uh, and thank you, everybody at home. We'll see you next week. Take care. Later.